Story time about how I dated my 30-year-old teacher when I was only 15. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I said, I mean, Instagram. When I was 14, my dad got a new job and we moved to a different state. This was terrible for me because I left all of my friends, my family, and my entire life. And I knew that going to a new school at 14 years old was going to be really hard. Basically starting from scratch. I really resented my dad for it, although looking back on it, I was being a total brat. My dad's job was paying him $200,000 a year. And obviously, I didn't recognize this as a good thing. My mom and dad were incredibly happy about this. We got a really big house with a pool, a tennis court, a gym. And my parents were the happiest I'd ever seen them. But this upset me even more. So me being a bratty teenager, I decided to make their lives impossible. I started staying out late even though I didn't have friends. And when I started making friends at this new school, I befriended the wrong ones. I even started drinking. My drama class was the only one that I ever looked forward to and really had fun in. And this is where I met the guy that would become my boyfriend the thing was he was actually really attractive he felt like another student in the class and he made sure to be friends with every single student because i was new he made an effort to get to really know me of course looking back i realized that this was g-r-o-o-m-i-n-g no i don't want to say the word and then he would flirt with me and i would flirt back part two is up Part two of how I dated my 30 year old teacher when I was 15. This claim is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. Sometimes he would flirt with me and then I would flirt back. But trust me, I never thought anything would actually happen. And like I said, he was becoming my best friend. He would give me all this advice and try to help me out. But then right after, he would say something flirty. One day he saw me having lunch by myself and asked me if I wanted to have lunch with him in his classroom. Of course, I said yes. I mean, I did have a crush on this guy. As we're sitting in his classroom, we're just talking like friends. And that's when he starts asking me about boys. I told him I didn't like anyone and this clearly made him happy. That's when he came to sit right next to me and told me that he had a confession to make that he actually had a crush on me and i got so happy i mean obviously i was a girl in high school who liked a guy and he liked her back it was like the best news in the world then he told me that he wished he could kiss me but he knew he couldn't in class then he said why don't you come over to my house later and i was like okay sure um please don't ever do what i did he picked me up a block away from school and we went to his house and as you can imagine things went down literally i fell in love with this man that very same day for the next two weeks i went to his house every day then he asked me to be his girlfriend and i said yes this is when things started to get really scary. He became really jealous and controlling. Part 3 is up. Part 3 of how I dated my 30-year-old teacher when I was only 15. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. Once he asked me to be his girlfriend and I said yes, he totally changed. He became controlling and really jealous. Anytime he saw me talking to any boy in school, he would actually send the guy to detention. Eventually, I told him that I didn't want to be his girlfriend anymore because of how controlling he was. That's when he told me that I needed to learn how to be an adult. And that all adult relationships were like that. That women had to follow the men's rules. And that if I wanted to be in a relationship with him, that's what I had to do. I was so naive that I actually believed him. So after that, I would try to avoid anything that would make him upset basically talking to any boys remember i said i had a group of friends he told me i couldn't hang out with them anymore he also wouldn't let me go to parties and anytime we were alone he would always try to kiss me even if i didn't want him to in total we were probably officially boyfriend and girlfriend for only three weeks i was getting so tired of it I told him i didn't want to be with him and that i was not going to be in his class anymore he tried to grab my arm but before he could i ran away from his class and after that he started begging me to get back with him so here's what i did i got another boyfriend a few weeks later and he basically left me alone after that to this day i've never told anyone this story Part of me feels guilty that I never said anything, but I'm pretty sure he didn't do it to anyone else. After I broke up with him, he moved to a small island and worked at a hotel. I'm now 25 and married. Not even my husband knows. Should I tell him? Story time about how I dumped my girlfriend when I found out she had cancer. Am I the bad guy? My girlfriend and I have dated for almost seven years. In that time, she always wanted to get married, but I never really felt married, so I never proposed. Two years ago, I started feeling ready and I decided to buy a ring. But unfortunately, she was diagnosed with cancer. She ended up having to stay in the hospital for a few months and underwent a bunch of therapy. All the treatments and everything were making her lose her hair, and I pretty much became totally unattracted to her. I know this sounds so harsh, but it's the truth. I struggled every single day as I fell out of love with her. When I talked to my mom about this, she told me to just have patience and to stick it out. But I just could not do it. I also didn't want to deal with having to take her to the hospital and helping her with the medication and helping her with the treatments. I wanted my own life. And suddenly I found myself having to drive her everywhere, feed her, clothe her, basically do everything for her. After a while, I asked her mom to move in with us to help me out. And this is when stuff started getting really bad. Her mom was basically taking care of her 24-7, so I pretty much did whatever I wanted. I would go out with my friends and I even started dating other girls. Here's the thing, my girlfriend and her family have a lot of money, so I basically didn't have to work at all while I was with her. Her parents paid for our rent and pretty much everything we ever did, so I couldn't really break up with her. Part two is up.
Story time about how I dumped my girlfriend when she got cancer. Am I the bad guy? My girlfriend's parents paid for our rent and pretty much everything we did. And of course at the time, I didn't really want to get a job. So I really only stayed in the relationship for the money. Like I said in part one, my girlfriend's mom moved in with us to help me take care of her. But I pretty much took advantage and decided to start dating other people. I downloaded every dating app I could think of and I would go on dates every single day. I lied to my girlfriend and her mom and told them that I got a new job. This way I could pretty much stay out all day. So I found myself with all of this new freedom. Would go on dates and pay for everything with my girlfriend's money. I know you guys probably hate me right now, but it gets worse. After a few weeks, I ended up with two new girlfriends. So in total, I had three girlfriends, and I got really good at lying to each one and spending time with them. I'd see one of them every single morning, and I would tell her that I was going to go to work. But then I would really go to the other girlfriend's house and spend the afternoon with her, and then I would end up going back to my apartment where my original girlfriend lived, and I would spend the rest of the night with her. At this point, she was starting to feel better with all the treatments, but I was just not attracted to her anymore. Part three is up. Story time about how I dumped my girlfriend when she got cancer, am I the asshole? So at this point I had three girlfriends at the same time, and I was getting really good at lying to them. But since I really didn't have a job and I only used my girlfriend's money to survive, I needed to stay with her. I just didn't find myself attracted to her at all anymore. So I decided to be honest with her and I told her that I wasn't attracted to her, just to see how she would react. She didn't even get mad, she just started to cry and beg me not to leave her. That's when she told me that she didn't want to be alone, but at that point I just couldn't do it anymore. I was falling in love with my other girlfriends. Here's what I did. I went to my other two girlfriends and told them a new story. I told them that I got fired from my new job and that I needed a place to move in. I also told them that I wouldn't be able to afford rent. One of them basically kicked me out of her apartment, but the other one told me that I could stay with her for as long as I wanted to without having to pay for rent. So that's the girl that I went with. Then I went to my OG girlfriend's house and I told her that I just couldn't be with her anymore and that I had fallen for someone else. This broke her heart and her dad was really close to kicking my ass. They took all my credit cards and cut me out of her account. So I'm broke as hell right now, but at least I'm happier. Eventually I'm gonna have to get an actual job Job, so I'm still trying to figure that out but my current girlfriend is paying for everything and my ex is in remission now which actually does make me happy for her I'm about to get murdered in the comments but hey you got to do what you got to do Am I the asshole for getting upset with my husband after he told me nothing will change while I'm pregnant? So me, 26 female, and my husband, 28 male, who I'll call Jake for this story, have been together for 5 years and married for 3. We have recently started trying for a baby as we both felt like that was the next step in our life together. And 3 weeks ago, I got a positive test back. We were really, really happy and told our families, and now my mom and mother-in-law want to throw a big baby shower for us. It was just super good news all around. Well, two nights ago, me and Jake were getting ready for bed when he reminds me to go through the house and make sure all the lights are off. Now, he can be a little lazy at times, and it has become a nightly routine for me to make sure all the lights are off that he leaves on before we go to bed. I wasn't feeling very well and asked if he could just do it since he wasn't doing anything, and he was literally standing by the door. He then tells me, no, this is what is expected of you every night. I was just a little hurt, but I didn't want to fight with him, so I just did it. When I came back, Jake was on this very long and unprovoked rant saying things like, just because you are pregnant does not mean anything will change. And you are still expected to cook, clean, and do all the chores every day because how can you be expected to be a mother if you can't handle a little work? He wasn't yelling or anything. He was just talking to me quietly as if I was two inches tall. I was shocked because I had never heard him say anything like this. This rant went on for about 30 minutes before I interjected and asked, well, what do you plan on doing to help me with all of this? He then got extremely defensive, saying he works his ass off at his job to provide for me and what is going to be our future children. For context, I don't work at the moment. My job was not paying enough to justify me going in, so I am a full-time college student. He ended up saying that it doesn't matter how I feel physically or mentally, it's a mother's job to push through, and if he helped and babied me, I wouldn't be a good mother. I got extremely upset and started yelling, and I said that, I wish I would have known this is how you felt before I got pregnant with your baby. There was a moment of silence before he started crying, and he left for the night to stay at his mother's house what a bitch he hasn't been back yet and my mother-in-law and sister-in-law have called me berating me and saying i broke jake's heart with what i said and i need to apologize immediately and until i do he isn't coming home i don't know how to feel so am i the asshole for yelling at my husband after he said he isn't helping me with anything during the pregnancy because it's a mother's job to deal with it like oh Ew, I've never gotten this upset over a story. That's so fucking, like, that behavior is just disgusting. Am I the asshole for cheating on my husband with his brother? Disclaimer, this is not my story time with sending me on Instagram. My husband and I have been married for three years, but my husband's always been very boring and kind of bland. The crazy thing is that I was the one that chased him and wanted to be in a relationship. He was 20 years old when we met and I met him through a friend. He was kind of charming when I first met him, but what I really liked about him was that he was a doctor, he owned two houses and a beach house, and he seemed like a really responsible guy. Before him, I only ever met broke guys. So when I met him, I was like, oh my God, this guy could be it. Oh, and the other thing is that he's extremely shy. So he 
he was not about to make a move on me or even talk to me, so I convinced my friend to invite us all out to dinner so that I could get a chance to talk to him. Throughout the entire dinner, he was so shy he basically avoided me. But then after the dinner, he told my friend that he thought I was cute, so I knew that I could win him. After that, we only saw each other at friends' parties, so on one occasion, I decided to just throw myself at him. I kissed him and I waited for his response. He said, thank you. He finally asked me out on a date and it was okay. I could definitely see me living my life with him. Obviously a boring one, but you know, whatever. We were engaged for six months and we started living together after that. He basically lets me do whatever I want with his money and he also helped me open up my own business. So no, I'm not just living off of his dime, okay? Fast forward to quarantine, his brother came to live with us. And this is when things got really, really complicated. His brother is the total opposite, makes me laugh and we have so much fun together. Like, really good fun. Part two is up. Am I the asshole for cheating on my husband with his brother? Disclaimer, this is not my story time with sending me on Instagram. So his brother moved in with us during quarantine. And as soon as he moved in, I was finally laughing and having fun. Like I said, my husband was really boring and shy. So you can imagine, like, even in bed, he was super boring. Like, he never wanted to do it. And if I ever asked him to, he would just say he was tired. So I got really sick of that. When his brother came to live with us, he would make jokes, we would laugh. He basically made me feel alive again. Here's how things went down with him. My husband loves to go golfing with his golfing buddies, so he would leave every single day for like two to three hours just to do that so i was pretty much all by myself all day he would also spend a lot of time where he worked at a hospital on the other hand his brother was home all the time he and i would watch movies he even started helping me out with my online business and soon we became really good friends i would tell him everything i would even complain about how boring his brother was one night we decided to have pizza and wine and between us we both had three bottles throughout the movie we kept laughing and every time i would just get closer and closer to him eventually i was sitting right next to him that's when we look at each other and we just started mad on. It was uncontrollable passion and I didn't know how to stop. And we ended up doing it. Part 3 is up. Am I the asshole for cheating on my husband with his brother? Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I said I mean Instagram. As we were making out on the couch, I just kept thinking how much better my life would be with him. As opposed to his boring brother. One thing led to another and we ended up doing it. And it was magical. And then every single day after that, we would kind of just smile at each other. When my husband was at home, he would steal kisses from me. If I was sitting on a chair, he would come by and quickly tickle my shoulder. I was living like a full-on romance novel. Of course, my boring husband didn't even notice. I was suddenly happy all the time. One day, I asked my husband if he had noticed the change me and he said you're being silly what are you talking about and right there that confirmed that my husband didn't even care that i was suddenly happier he wasn't even bothering to ask why by the way his brother was staying with us until he found his own house and guess what he ended up moving in two houses away from ours by the way he also owns his own businesses so he's really wealthy he's tried to convince me to leave his brother but i don't know sometimes i think my husband doesn't really like when he was in college he really didn't come see my mom or i but of course my mom and him kept in contact when my dad or should i say husband graduated from medical school he finally got married. And of course this was hard for my mom because she thought eventually they would get back together. By the time my dad remarried, I was about 12 years old. When I turned 19 is when my dad and I started spending more time together alone. Or should I say my husband? Keep in mind, I really didn't have a relationship during my teen years. We only spoke on the phone a few times and he would visit every now and then, but not a lot. When I turned 19, I was living in college and I was closer to my dad. So I decided to reach out to him and ask him if he wanted to have dinners every now and then and he said yes. The first time we went out to dinner, we actually had a lot of fun and it really didn't feel like I was hanging out with my dad it was more like I was hanging out with a friend. We just didn't have that father-daughter dynamic. We would meet up almost every single weekend and our relationship was actually very friendly. We would make each other laugh and talk about everything. And this is when we realized that we had a lot in common. Eventually, he asked me if I was dating anyone and I told him I wasn't. When I got home, I started realizing that I wasn't thinking about my dad like a dad. I was thinking about him like a man. So the next time I saw him, I decided to tell him that. And that's when he told me that he didn't see me like a daughter either. It took a lot of courage for me to tell him this. So that's when things started to really change between us. Every time we would hang out after that, it was more like a date. We started getting to know each other and he would hold my hand every now and then. And a few weeks later, we had our first kiss. Part three is up. Story time about how I married my father. Disclaimers is not my story time and trigger warning for this. After our first kiss, everything changed. We didn't think of each other as father-daughter. And of course, our relationship began to get more serious. And one thing we kept discussing was, should we tell our family or should we just keep it secret? So we kept it secret for almost a full year. I told my mom that I was dating someone, but I wouldn't tell her who it was. Also a little side note, my mom and dad didn't have any contact between them at this time. My mom was actually married to someone else and they were very happy. But for me, it was getting to the point where I needed to tell somebody. Because yes, part of me felt that this was really wrong, but the other part of me felt that it was just right. I had never met anybody like him before. So I decided to tell my grandma. And she nearly had a heart attack. She called my mom right away and told her the truth. That's when my mom came over and we talked for a few hours. I explained to them everything and they still didn't agree with me. My mom called my dad and they got into an epic fight. I was totally expecting this, but it really hurt. My mom and grandma were totally against the relationship. That's when they told me that they would never speak to me again if I kept the relationship going. A few months later, 
later, we decided to get married privately. And I didn't tell my mom. She actually found out through my best friend who was totally against our relationship as well. And she pretty much tells my mom everything I tell her. It's been two years since we got married and part of me still feels guilty and like I did something really wrong. But now it's getting even worse because I actually met someone who's my age and is not related to me. But I don't have the heart to break up with my husband slash dad. I told my mom about this new guy and she really wants me to get a divorce. I feel like all along I was just looking for the love of a man because I didn't get that from my dad. Now that I'm seeing someone else, I'm realizing how wrong what I did was. But I don't want to break my dad slash husband's heart. How can I fix this? What should I do? Am I the asshole for getting upset with my husband after he told me nothing will change while I'm pregnant? So me, 26 female, and my husband, 28 male, who I'll call Jake for this story, have been together for 5 years and married for 3. We have recently started trying for a baby as we both felt like that was the next step in our life together. And 3 weeks ago, I got a positive test back. We were really, really happy and told our families and now my mom and mother-in-law want to throw a big baby shower for us. It was just super good news all around. Well, two nights ago, me and Jake were getting ready for bed when he reminds me to go through the house and make sure all the lights are off. Now, he can be a little lazy at times, and it has become a nightly routine for me to make sure all the lights are off that he leaves on before we go to bed. I wasn't feeling very well and asked if he could just do it since he wasn't doing anything, and he was literally standing by the door. He then tells me, no, this is what is expected of you every night. I was just a little hurt, but I didn't want to fight with him, so I just didn't. When I came back, Jake goes on this very long and unprovoked rant saying things like, just because you are pregnant does not mean anything will change. And you are still expected to cook, clean, and do all the chores every day because how can you be expected to be a mother if you can't handle a little work? He wasn't yelling or anything. He was just talking to me quietly as if I was two inches tall. I was shocked because I had never heard him say anything like this. This rant went on for about 30 minutes before I interjected and asked, well, what do you plan on doing to help me with all of this? He then got extremely defensive saying he works his ass off at his job to provide for me and what is going to be our future children. For context, I don't work at the moment. My job was not paying enough to justify me going in so I am a full-time college student. He ended up saying that it doesn't matter how I feel physically or mentally, it's a mother's job to push through and if he helped and babied me, I wouldn't be a good mother. I got extremely upset and started yelling and I said that I wish I would have known this is how you felt before I got pregnant with your baby. There was a moment of silence before he started crying and he left for the night to stay at his mother's house. What a bitch. He hasn't been back yet and my mother-in-law and sister-in-law have called me berating me and saying I broke Jake's heart with what I said and I need to apologize immediately and until I do, he isn't coming home. I don't know how to feel. So, am I the asshole for yelling at my husband after he said he isn't helping me with anything during the pregnancy because it's a mother's job to deal with it? Am I the asshole for telling my husband it's disgusting that he doesn't wipe after going to the bathroom? For some context, I, 39 female, have a husband who will call Adam, 37 male. Adam is Indian, Saudi Arabian, American, and this will be relevant later on in the story. I'm Swedish American. Adam and I got married seven months ago and only moved in together after we got married due to Adam's religious reasons. Well, three weeks into our marriage, everything is absolutely flawless until this one issue started to appear. Adam doesn't use toilet paper after using the bathroom and instead he uses water. I learned this after I questioned the fact that there was always water left on the toilet seat after him. This argument sounds stupid, but it's genuinely bothering me. He explained to me how washing is a lot better and effective than wiping, which I can somewhat understand. But I told him it's absolutely disgusting not to wipe because I don't want to sleep next to someone who's unhygienic. He completely stopped buying toilet paper and I said if he was mad at my comment, he could have told me, but it stopped forcing me into his habits. He said washing is a norm in India and the Middle East, then told me to buy my own since he's so unhygienic. It's ridiculous because he's the breadwinner. He told his sister about the issue and she blasted me on Facebook. Story time about how my boyfriend lied about having a terminal disease so that he could marry me. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I repeat, this is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. My now husband, who I actually ended up marrying, we met through a dating app exactly one year ago. From the beginning, he totally love bombed me. After we gave each other our phone numbers, he would text me every single day at night. He would call me beautiful and give me so many compliments. Some part of me knew that he was love bombing me and that it was wrong, but I also enjoyed it because I hadn't been treated like that in a very long time. He asked me out on a date and we actually lived two hours away from each other. So he made the trip all the way 
went down to where I lived. We had an amazing date. We talked for three hours. Then we went to the beach and stayed there for about six hours. We told each other our life stories, and he told me that he was looking to settle down and not just someone to date casually. This was obviously my goal too, so it was perfect. We were really compatible and we made each other laugh a lot. One of the first things that he made very clear to me was that he had money and lots of it. He owned two companies and was starting a third one. He took care of his entire family and even bought his parents a house. After dating for two weeks, he asked me to be his girlfriend and of course I said yes. He would come down to visit me every single weekend. I was in nursing school at the time and he even helped me pay for my education. I mean, this man was perfect, or at least I thought. After almost a month, he started talking about marriage. I knew I liked him a lot and I was definitely falling in love with him, but I just wasn't ready to talk about marriage. And I told him that. He said that he was really disappointed that I wouldn't consider marrying him. I told him that it wasn't that and maybe even date for a few years before we got engaged. This is when he got really upset and out of nowhere, he just yells out, I may not have a few years to live. He then pretended to break down and start crying, but no tears were coming out of his eyes. I knew it was strange behavior, but I couldn't believe that he would lie about something like that. He explained to me that he had a terminal disease, but wouldn't tell me what it was and told me that the doctors only gave him a year to live. Obviously, I was shocked. I couldn't even stop crying. Then he told me that that's why he wanted to get married to me. He wanted us to get married and pregnant before he passed. Then he pulls out a huge diamond ring. This man was asking me to marry him after only a month of dating. And unfortunately, I said yes. Part two is up. Part two of how my boyfriend lied about having a terminal disease so that he could marry me. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I repeat, this is not my story time. I was sending me an Instagram. After he told me that he had that terminal disease, I couldn't say no to him. So I accepted the engagement ring, but it would be the biggest mistake of my life. He was so happy about us getting engaged, but all I could do was cry because he told me he had only one year left to live. Before I knew it, he hired a wedding planner and he even started planning our engagement party. Mind you, we had only been dating for a month. This is around the time that he became really possessive. He was getting more and more jealous of my friends, and if I was going to hang out with family or friends, he would guilt trip me into staying with him because he only had a year left to live. I felt like I was trapped. We were both super involved in the planning of the wedding, and it was actually really nice for me to have that time with him, but then other times he would get really jealous. For example, I have a group of friends and we usually have dinner every Friday night. My friends and I are really close and when they found out about my engagement, they flipped out and told me that I shouldn't get married. Somehow my fiance caught wind of this and told me that I couldn't hang out with my friends anymore, especially the guys in the group. He also made me promise that I wouldn't speak to them after he passed away. Even my family didn't want me to get married to him. My family would question me all the time, asking me what his terminal disease was and to be honest, I couldn't even tell them. Every time I brought up the subject to my fiance, he would get upset and ask me if I didn't believe him. I told him my family and I just wanted to know what it was that he had. He told me that he had a tumor. He didn't say where or if he was getting any treatment, and I basically knew not to ask him about it again. I was so stressed because my family didn't want me to marry him, my friends didn't want me to marry him, and now I couldn't even see my friends, and I even had to drop out of school so that I could spend all my time with him. Now don't get me wrong, I was in love with him, but knowing now that he was going to pass away, part of me was putting up a wall so that I wouldn't be so devastated when he passed. I mean, what else could I do? The wedding came around really quickly. My dress was beautiful, the venue was absolutely stunning, the food was delicious, and my entire family and friends were there. It was actually one of the happiest days of my life. We had an amazing wedding and the reception was so much fun. I basically danced with my husband all night long. For our honeymoon, we went to Europe. Of course, we stayed at the best hotels, we would go shopping and eating at the best restaurants, but he became even more controlling and jealous. If a man happened to pass by and I looked at him, he would get upset at me. Anytime I got on my phone to do anything, he would ask me what I was doing, and every time I would call my mom, he would get really annoyed. It got to the point where I stopped calling my family because I didn't want him to get upset. Part 2 is up. Part 3 of how my boyfriend lied about having a terminal disease so that he could marry me. Disclaimer is not my story time was sent to me on Instagram. During the honeymoon, he became more and more jealous. So finally, when we got back home, I asked him about his disease. He never looked or acted sick. He never went to the doctor or even took any medication. The more I would ask about his terminal disease, the angrier he would get. Finally, one day I told him that I didn't believe him. That's when he locked me in our bedroom for two hours. He sat outside the door and told me the truth. He knew that I was too good for him and that I would never marry him. So he knew he had to make up a lie to actually marry me. And that a terminal disease was the first thing that came to mind. He knew I was studying to be a nurse and that I would fall hard for that. I told my family and friends, they said they knew that something was off with him. He keeps apologizing and wants us to stay together. He pays for everything and I have absolutely zero money and no job. But he's still controlling. I feel bad for him and I can tell that he really loves me. I think I should ask for a separation. What do you guys think? What should I do? Story time about how my boss severely bullied me because she was envious of me. This clearance is not my story time, it was sent to me on Instagram. I work at a really high-end nail salon. I'm talking about two to three hundred dollars per manicure and pedicure. So it's very high-end and our clientele is very rich. My goal has been to open my own nail salon, but it hasn't happened yet. Obviously, I don't have enough money to open it, so I needed to get a job. This new nail salon had opened up near my house. It was the prettiest thing I'd ever seen in my life, so I definitely wanted to get a job there. I went in for an interview with the owner of the nail salon. During the interview, she was really nice, but kind of gave off that queen bee 
vibe. Like, she was the popular girl and she didn't want anyone else to be popular or pretty. I got a call from her a week later and she asked me if I could do her nails to see how well I did. And when I did her nails, she was impressed. She said that I was really good and that I was hired immediately. I started working and within the first month I had the biggest clientele list. A lot of clients were asking for me to do their nails. And when other clients heard the other clients asked for me, they also started asking for me. You know, word of mouth. I was extremely proud of myself. Not only was I making a lot of money, but I was actually building a clientele base that really loved my work. Don't get me wrong, the other girls at the salon were actually really good, and so was the owner. If we were really busy, sometimes the owner would pick up any walk-in clients. And one of the walk-in clients came in and asked specifically for me. The owner told her that I was busy and that she would do her nails. That's when the girl said that she would come back whenever I was available. My boss quickly snapped at the girl and told her that she was just as good as I was. The worst part was that she said it loud enough so that everyone in the salon could hear her. The client clearly felt uncomfortable but agreed to it anyway. Later that day on my break, I could hear my boss talking in the kitchen. I decided to wait outside and see what she was saying. Sure enough, she was talking about me and telling one of the other girls that I thought I was too pretty for this job and that I didn't have any experience. She also said that I probably just watched YouTube videos in order to learn. Number one, I have 10 years of experience. And number two, it doesn't matter if you watch YouTube videos as long as you're learning. This obviously hurt my feelings and I tried not to cry. Then I realized that she did it on purpose. She was speaking really loudly and she knew that I was about to go on break. That's when I realized that she was definitely trying to bully me. The following day, I get a phone call from her telling me that I should stay home. When I asked her why she said that she hired a new girl and she said in fact don't come at all this week and she basically hung up on me part two is up part two of how my boss bullied me because she was extremely envious of me disclaimer this is not my story time i sent me an instagram after she told me not to come into work for an entire week because she was hiring a new girl i decided to go in the following day and just make sure that i still had my job i walked in and said hi to everyone this is when once again i catch her talking trash about me with the new girl she told the new girl that i thought i was better than everyone and that she should definitely stay away from me but again, I didn't say anything just because I didn't want to have any confrontations with my boss. I waited a few seconds, knocked on the door, and entered. I asked her if I could speak to her, and she said yes. I told her I couldn't stay off working for a full week. This is when she said, okay, fine, you can come in tomorrow. But you're going to have to train the new girl because she has zero experience. So essentially, I wasn't going to be doing anyone's nails. I was going to be training the new girl. This made me upset, but I knew that I needed to play my cards right. So I said yes with a smile on my face. I trained the new girl for the entire week, and she actually turned out to be pretty good at nails. The following week, she was even taking on clients for gel manicures. Now, I thought this was going to make my boss upset, but it actually made her really happy. Finally, I see that everyone's starting to pack up their stuff to leave early. I asked one of the girls what was happening, and she said that everyone was going to dinner together. I said, oh, okay. And she said, weren't you told? Uh, no, I was not told. I knew this was another intimidation slash bullying tactic from my boss. My boss had even invited the new girl, and not me. They all left, went to dinner, and my boss pretended not to even see me when she was leaving. The following day, I come into work and one of my clients is already waiting for me. We sit down at the table and my client begins to tell me that my boss was talking trash about me before I came in and that she even did it in front of the clients. She informed me that my boss was talking trash about my body, my hair, and my clothes and that I was basically a JLo knockoff. I quit on the spot and took all my clients with me, over 22 women. I opened my own salon two months later. I'm now her competition. She sent me a message apologizing, but I haven't responded. What should I say? Story time about how two men tried to kidnap me after work. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I sent me on Instagram. I just turned 19 years old and I've been working at a coffee shop for six months. Unfortunately, sometimes I have to close the coffee shop all by myself, but it didn't really ever bother me until now. My parents, on the other hand, really don't like for me to close the coffee shop by myself, which of course makes total sense. At first, I thought they were just overreacting, but they weren't. My parents would usually pick me up after my closing shift, but they would always arrive 15 minutes before I actually had to lock up just to make sure that I got out safely. Two weeks ago, my dad had to go on a business trip, so my mom was the one that was going to have to go pick me up by herself. A few hours before closing time, my mom texted me saying that unfortunately the car wasn't turning on. She told me that she would call AAA, but I told her not to worry and that I would just get an Uber home. She kept fighting me on it, but I managed to convince her to just stay home. I kept my mom in the loop the entire night about the closing shift, and finally, I called my Uber. The Uber was 10 minutes away, so I just waited inside and until I saw them pull up. As I was gathering my things and putting on a jacket, I hear a knock at the door. When I turn around to look, it's a guy in a suit. He begs for me to let him in so that he could get a coffee. I apologized and said that we were closed for the night, but that he could come back in the morning. Then he started begging more and more. I actually felt really bad for him because he looked like he was freezing, so I decided to open the door and let him in quickly. He ordered an espresso and I quickly made it. I handed it to him, he paid really quickly and told me he was on his way out. Suddenly, another guy walks in through the door because I forgot to lock it behind me. And when the other guy walks in, the first guy told him to go straight to the cash register. Instantly, I knew that I was being robbed. 
But the guy with the suit was definitely the mastermind behind everything. He told me to sit down and that as long as I didn't do anything, he wouldn't hurt me. But I remembered I had the Uber still on the way. But it's not like I could pull out my phone to check if it was near. There was a panic button underneath the counter under the register. But I was sitting two tables away from it. Suddenly, I feel something in the back of my neck. The guy that had just been at the cash register comes up behind me and starts blowing on my neck. He started saying how pretty I was and that I looked way better in person than in picture. The guy in the suit chuckled and said, yeah, she is pretty in person. Suddenly, he grabs me by my arm and tells me that I'm leaving with them. I begged and begged for them not to. That's when I remembered my dad gave me a tip in case someone was ever trying to pick me up. I threw myself to the ground and acted as dead weight. It made it really hard for the one guy to pick me up. Luckily, I could reach over and hold onto a pole that was right near the register, and I held onto it as tight as I could. We struggled for about 30 seconds. Suddenly, the other guy comes in front of me, bites my hands down so that I could let go of the pole. Instead, I kept holding on tight. Out of nowhere, my phone starts to ring and I realize it's probably the Uber driver. I told the guys that my Uber driver was waiting for me outside and that they would get caught. The Uber driver must have seen what was happening inside because he started beeping really loud. The guy in the suit puts me in a chokehold and I begin to pass out. Part 2 is up. Part 2 of how two men tried to kidnap me after work. Disclaimer is not my story time, is sending me on Instagram. The man in the suit had me in a chokehold, but I could hear the Uber driver beeping as loud as he could outside. He had already seen what was happening to me and probably already called the cops. The man in the suit dragged my body towards the back exit. His partner had already left. This is when I saw my opportunity. I knew where all the pans and pots and knives were. I reached for a pot and I hit him as hard as I could. But unlike how it happens in the movies, he did not pass out. Instead, this made him angrier, but it gave me a second to run towards the front of the store. As soon as I did that, I could hear the police sirens pulling up toward the front of the store. This made the man in the suit back away from me. I ran to the cops and I was safe. Unfortunately, the two men haven't been found. And I was interrogated for hours. My dad came home from the trip, but now I'm terrified that these guys know where I live. Also, what picture was he talking about? The police think that they had been stalking me for weeks, if not months. I'm terrified and I don't know what to do. Help me. Story time about how I broke the news to my very religious family that I was single and pregnant. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It's sending me on Instagram. My parents are very religious and super strict. I was never allowed to have boyfriends or even talk to boys or even have guy friends. My girlfriends only could come over to my house and I could never go over to friends' houses. I was never even allowed to go to parties. Anytime I needed to make a phone call, my parents would monitor the phone call. So there was absolutely no way I could get away with anything. And I never even lied to them. I got straight A's and graduated valedictorian from my high school. When I turned 18, I went to the university my parents wanted me to go to. My parents are very rich and have lots of money. So I knew that they would get me into whatever university they wanted me to go to. When I finally got accepted into university, I begged them to let me stay on campus, even though we're only a two-hour drive away from the university. I wanted to have privacy, and of course, I wanted to feel like a grown-up. After months and months of convincing my parents, they finally said yes. They even got me a private dorm so that I wouldn't have to share my room with anyone. For the first time in my life, I had independence and I could make my own decisions. But still, all in all, I was a pretty good girl. I would go to class, go study at the library, and then go back to my dorm. I never went to any parties, but I did start making friends. One of these friends was a really wild girl. She was in my dorm building and she pretty much did everything I ever wanted to do. She was wild and crazy and I just wanted to be like her. She started inviting me to all these house parties and I didn't know how to say no. I went to one of them and I met this really cool guy. At least I thought he was cool at the time. We spoke all night and he tried to make me believe that he was this perfect little boy. And of course, I fell for it. After hanging out a few more times, we did the dirty. And then he ghosted me. This was the first time I had done anything like that and I was really heartbroken. I was convinced that this guy was going to marry me. That's how naive I was. After the last time I'd seen him, I realized that I hadn't gotten my period. And when I checked my calendar, it had been two months since I got my last period. Now you may ask why I didn't notice this before. Pretty much because I was studying all the time. I never really gave myself any breaks and I was constantly reading books and doing homework. I basically lived in my books. When the realization of not having my period for two months came in, I was devastated and I knew that I was pregnant. I ran to the nearest drugstore and got a test. When I saw that it was positive, the first thing I did was call the boy. But like I said, he had ghosted me. But this time he did answer the phone because it had been a few months. I told him that the test was positive. He told me the baby wasn't his and then he hung up. Unfortunately for me, I had no idea where he lived. I decided to Google his name and apparently he didn't even go to the university that I was going to. He was just a friend of some guy that went there. Finally, Christmas break arrives. I was four weeks pregnant and I showed up to my parents' house. Part two is up. Part 2 of how I broke the news to my very religious parents that I was single and pregnant. Disclaimer, this is not my story time, I was sending me on Instagram. I was four weeks pregnant, the guy that got me pregnant had ghosted me, and I knew I had to go home for Christmas from university. I had thought of how I was going to tell my parents and I even wrote them a letter. I was simply going to hand my parents the letter as soon as I got home. But when I got there, they were so happy to see me. I hadn't been home for a few months and I could tell that they really missed me and I just didn't want to spoil the moment. So instead of telling them the first day, I waited until the second day. I came out from my bedroom and my mom asked me why I looked so pale. This is when I just said it. I'm pregnant. My mom instantly began to cry and asked me what happened. I could hear my dad coming down from the stairs. I turned around and said to him, I'm pregnant. When my dad saw my mom crying, he sat down on the couch and said nothing. And this was scarier than him yelling at me. My mom joined him on the couch and then I sat on the floor right next to them. That's when I just decided to tell them the truth. From beginning to end, I told them exactly what happened. Then my dad said, don't worry. 
we will help you. I could not believe it. And as soon as my dad said that, my mom stopped crying and said, yeah, he's right. We're your family and you don't need that guy. The only thing my dad asked from me was to stay in university. And I told him that there was no way I was going to let my education go to waste. I could tell my parents were really disappointed in me, but they didn't say anything. We had all our family coming over for Christmas dinner, and my dad announced it to everyone then. Instead of acting the way I thought he was going to act, he was almost happy. He wasn't angry, but he was disappointed, but he didn't hide it like a little dirty secret. My family congratulated me, and they were all very happy. But of course, they started asking all these questions. When I told them that the father wouldn't be involved, they were really upset. Luckily, my aunt was dating a private investigator at the time. I gave her the baby daddy's number and name, and she gave it to her boyfriend. He came back with a bunch of information for me. Apparently he was a dropout and didn't have a job, but he came from a very wealthy family. So my parents and I decided to get a lawyer and ask for child support. When I had the baby, my family was so happy. He is literally the light of our lives. He is so loved by his grandparents and I'm so grateful to my parents. We all live together and my baby is five years old now. His grandpa and him are best friends and they do everything together. Now the baby daddy wants to be in my child's life, but I don't know if I should say yes or no. Up until last year, he didn't want anything to do with us. But now that he sees that the baby is older and he plays, he wants to be involved now. I don't know if I should say yes, but I also feel bad depriving my child of his father. Merry Christmas and what should I do? Story time about how my husband ran away with his brother's wife on their wedding day. Disclaimers is not my story time, but send me on Instagram. My husband has been a serial cheater for the five years that we've been married. He started cheating on me two weeks after we got married. And no, he never bothered to hide any of it. Anytime I found out about an affair, I would ask him and he would be honest and tell me that yes, he was having an affair, but that he would end it. But of course I knew that once a cheater, always a cheater. So I never, ever, ever trusted him after that. I wanted to even the playing field, so I decided to have my own affairs. You see, I wanted to give him a taste of his own medicine so that he could see what it felt like. And he actually got psychotic when he found out that I cheated on him the first time. He even locked me in a room for five hours and questioned me. I told him that if he was going to cheat on me, then I was definitely going to cheat on him too. I know that this is incredibly toxic, but it was the only thing that I could think of to make him change his ways. That's when he finally decided that he would try to stay faithful to me for as long as he possibly could. But what do you know, two weeks later, he was already cheating on me again. He had a really rowdy group of friends and they would always go out to bars, so this is how he met these women. Of course, he'd tell them that he was single and these girls had no idea that he was married. So it's not like I could get mad at them. My husband is close to his brother and they would always hang out. When his brother got engaged and he met his fiance, I could tell that my husband was eyeing her from head to toe. That's when I told him that he needed to stay away from her, not only for me, but for his brother. And he swore that he would never ever do that to his own brother. But he could definitely do it to his wife, of course. We would see his brother and his fiance all the time. We would have dinners together, and that's when I started noticing that she was also staring at my husband. I would catch them constantly looking at each other. Eventually, I told my husband's brother, my brother-in-law, about the concerns I had of his fiance with my husband. He laughed and even actually got mad at me for suggesting such a thing. I told him that he would regret it if he didn't take action now. A few weeks before the wedding, my husband started acting really strange. Part two is up. Part two of how my husband ran away with his brother's wife on their wedding day. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I sent him on Instagram. I noticed my husband was acting really strange before the wedding. He started going out every single night. He wouldn't tell me where he would go and he would leave his phone in the house. Sometimes he'd come back the following morning. A few days before the wedding, I decided to confront him about it. I knew that I didn't want to stress him out before the wedding, but at the same time, I couldn't live like this. I had this worried, sick feeling in my stomach every single night and I would barely sleep knowing that he was out doing God knows what. When I asked him what was going on, he told me that I was overreacting and that he was just playing poker with his friends at his friend's house. I told him to call his friend on speaker so that he could confirm his story. That's when he threw a tantrum. He started slamming doors and cabinets in the kitchen telling me that I was overreacting and that I needed to let him live his life. And he even mentioned divorce for the first time ever. He said he didn't want to be tied down to such a jealous woman. That's when I broke. I literally pulled out a list of all the women that he had cheated on me, the ones that I knew of. And I told him that he had broken my heart over 10 times that I knew of. And that I knew he would never stop and that the only thing that was fair for me was to at least have him be honest. That's when he hugged me and started to cry. And that was the first time I had seen him show any emotion towards my pain. He began to apologize and told me that he never meant to hurt me that way. We hugged and we just watched a movie and everything was back to normal. But I knew that nothing was back to normal and that he was hiding something. Finally, the day of the wedding comes and he is stressed. From the moment he woke up, he was pacing in the house, sweating. He even had four cups of coffee. I asked him what was wrong and he said that he was just nervous for his brother. We finally head to the church where everyone is already waiting. And when we get there, the first thing I see is the bride. She's standing outside the church with the suitcase. Without even turning to look at me, my husband tells me to get out of the car quickly. Part three is up. 
Part three of how my husband ran away with his brother's wife on their wedding day. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I said to me on Instagram. Without looking at me, my husband tells me to get out of the car as fast as I can. I asked him what was going on and he opened the door and pushed me out. That's when the bride jumps into the car with her suitcase and her wedding dress and he drove off as fast as he could. I kept yelling at the top of my lungs. Of course, the entire family runs out of the church to see what's happening. That's when my mother-in-law told me that the wedding had already happened, but we had arrived late. And that right after they were married, the bride took the groom aside and told her that she didn't want to be with him. Of course, he got really upset and they got into a full blown out fight in front of everyone. When he asked her where she was going, she said she had a ride prepared. She grabbed her suitcase and apparently walked out. And that's when my husband and I pulled up. The groom and I were absolutely devastated. I kept calling my husband and he kept calling his wife. But of course, they both ignored us. My parents-in-law were so upset that they even called the police to report his car stolen. This was in the hopes that they would at least find their car. But unfortunately, nobody found the car on the streets. This led us to believe that they were probably hauled up at some hotel. This is when I remembered that my husband really liked this one hotel that was by his job. He always told me that he would go there for drinks with his friends. So my family-in-law and I show up. And as soon as we get to the hotel, I see my husband and his now girlfriend having lunch in the restaurant at the hotel. Of course, we confronted them. We were all yelling at the top of our lungs and the hotel kicked us out. Finally, my father-in-law was able to talk some sense into my husband and make him realize what he had done. Not only had he ruined our marriage, but his brother's future as well. His brother was beside himself, so depressed and kept crying. And my mother-in-law had to take a sedative in order to calm down. My husband came to his senses and told his girlfriend that what they did was wrong. He looked at me and begged me for forgiveness, but of course, I didn't speak a word to him. My now sister-in-law slash my husband's girlfriend, she decided to head straight to the airport and went back to her parents. It's been a few weeks now and my brother-in-law took her back. I still haven't forgiven my husband, but we're still living in the same house. I don't know what to do. Story time about how my boyfriend is bullying me into losing weight. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sending me on Instagram. My boyfriend and I have been together for two months. He's a personal trainer, so he's really into fitness. When we started dating, I wasn't super fit, but I definitely was toned. Unfortunately, I got the Rona, so I got fired from my job because I couldn't work for two weeks. I was super sick and I really became depressed. I basically sat on my couch for those two weeks and ate a lot. Before I knew it, I had gained seven pounds. When I finished my quarantine, I finally was able to see my boyfriend. And when he first came into my house to see me, he looked shocked. He looked me up and down and said, did you gain weight? I said, yeah, I probably gained like seven or 10 pounds. And then he asked me how I could let myself go like that. I told him I was totally by myself, cooped up in my apartment and I had nothing else to do but eat. And that's when he said, and I quote, well, we need to get you back into the gym to get you in shape again. Cause I don't want a fat girlfriend. I laughed because I thought for sure he's joking, but then he said, stop laughing, it's not a joke. My stomach sank and I felt like I was gonna poop my pants. I started to cry and he told me that I shouldn't be a baby, that he's allowed to be honest with me about stuff like this because it has to do with him being attracted to me. So in other words, he wasn't attracted to me anymore. That's when he went into my room, picked out a pair of leggings and a sweatshirt, told me to get dressed and took me straight to the gym. He made me exercise for an hour and a half. Instead of getting upset about it, I decided to just take it in stride and go with it. I thought maybe I can get in the best shape of my life now that I have a trainer boyfriend friend. As we were working out, he kept commenting on my thighs. He said that they needed to have a gap and that instead of being muscular, I was super soft. Again, I started to cry. Part two is up. Part two of how my boyfriend is bullying me into losing weight. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. After he told me that I was soft at the gym, I started to cry again. I told him that he needed to be more sensitive towards my feelings and that I didn't want to be in a relationship if he was going to be like this toward me. That's when he said that he didn't want to be in a relationship with me because I had gained weight and that's not what he had signed up for. That's when he told me I needed to look around and see all the fit women in the gym and that he could have any of those girls. I was in utter shock. I just couldn't believe that he was talking to me like that and I had never seen that side of him before. The more I cried, the angrier he got. But finally he said, okay, I'm sorry, let's just do 20 minutes on the Stairmaster. That's when I told him I didn't want to work out anymore. Mind you, he had already had me at the gym for an hour and a half. That's when he said, fine, I'll take you home, but I'm coming back to the gym. The whole 
whole way home, he stayed quiet and gave me the cold shoulder while I cried. He pulled up to my house and I got out of the car and he literally sped away as fast as he could. He proceeded to give me the cold shoulder for the next two days. I finally broke and texted him telling him we needed to speak. That's when he said we could talk at the gym. I agreed and he went to pick me up. But the first thing he wanted to do at the gym was put me on a scale and weigh me. I told him absolutely not. Part three is up. Part three of how my boyfriend is bullying me into losing weight. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. He was trying to force me to get on the scale so that he could weigh me because he wanted to see how much weight I could lose in one week. I kept saying no, but then he said fine. Then he handed me a piece of paper and said, here's the diet I want you to follow for the next four weeks. I grabbed the piece of paper and just put it in my purse. Then he has the audacity to get mad at me for not even looking at the diet. He said that I was disrespectful and that I didn't even look at the diet and that it took him hours to write all of that out. And then he said the thing that crushed my heart. He would be embarrassed to take me around his friends and family with the way that I looked. As soon as he said that, I ran out of the gym and walked home. Of course he followed me and told me to get in the car, but I refused. I finally got to my house and he called me. I told him I needed some time away from him and that his behavior was extremely toxic. And that if I didn't have a problem with my weight, neither should he. That's when he said that he was accustomed to only being with girls that were super fit and even had abs. He told me that at first he wasn't convinced if he should date me, but I had a really pretty face. And that he was willing to overlook the fact that I wasn't super fit. He's a total narcissist, but I'm still in love with him. I tried to break up with him, but he said no. And he's still insisting that we just go to the gym together at least. I don't even know how to respond to him. What should I say? Seems I'm always late I text and reaching out for you Every morning I find drunk and messages spilling the truth on you Story time about how my husband's mistress tried to mace me and kidnap me. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. My husband and I have been married for four months. So yeah, not very long. We dated for two years and everything was pretty much okay. At the beginning of the relationship, I had my doubts about him. I earn a lot more money than he does and he's always resented me for that. He makes comments and jokes about how I'm the one that brings the bacon home. Finally, I told him that he needed to stop doing that, especially in front of our friends and family. But other than that, we've had a really great relationship. I never thought that he was capable of ever cheating on me. We finally got married back in 2017. The wedding was so special and our family were there. Our honeymoon was amazing and when we got back home we both decided that we wanted to buy a house together. Or mostly like I decided to buy a house and he would give me some money. Obviously this didn't bother me because I knew it was our forever home so I didn't mind paying for it and having him help me with the rest. After we settled into our new home my husband decided that he wanted to get a better paying job. Obviously this made me really happy because it would give him more confidence if he was earning more money. He decided to switch to financing and he started working on Wall Street. Two months after getting married he started earning way more money than I did. This made him so happy. But he quickly started to change. He only bought expensive designer stuff. One thing I did notice was that he never invited me to go to his office. So like the good wife I am, I decided to surprise him at his office with lunch. And when I got there, I was greeted by his assistant. I didn't get worried because I didn't find her very attractive. She looked very plain Jane and homely. But when I finally saw my husband, I asked him why he didn't tell me that he finally got his assistant. He told me that he just forgot and he didn't think it was important. So I let it go. But I noticed that his assistant was trying to be overly nice to me. And she was also asking me a lot of questions about my husband. But like I said, I didn't feel insecure at all just because I didn't think she was very attractive. At the end of the year, my husband and I are invited to the Christmas party. Of course, his assistant is there and she proceeds to get drunk and start telling me things like how I was so lucky to be married to my husband and how I should be more grateful to him. Obviously, I took offense. I went straight to my husband and told him what his assistant said to me. That's when my husband laughed it off and said that I was reading into it. Two seconds later, he's in his office with her yelling at her. Part two is up. Part two of how my husband's mistress tried to mace me and kidnap me. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. That's when I catch my husband yelling at his assistant. All I could make out was that he was telling her to keep her mouth shut when she was around me. Obviously, these were all red flags. I decided not to say anything for the rest of the night, but his assistant kept drinking the entire night. That's when my husband pulled her aside and told her to go home. She started crying and she tried to hold his hand. And that's when I knew it. They were having an affair. Mind you, I didn't suspect anything. I just thought she wasn't very pretty. She was very plain Jane. I didn't think that my husband would ever find her attractive. After she left the party, I decided to pull my husband aside and ask him what was going on. I asked him if he was having an affair with her and he told me the truth, he said yes. Obviously this was really heartbreaking. We hadn't been married long. That's when he told me that he wanted independence from me because I was the one that paid for everything and that he wanted to feel like a man and that because I earned more money and paid for everything, he felt less of a man. Wow, great excuse. He promised to break things off because he had no feelings for her and that he actually felt bad for using her because she was falling in love with him. I told him that he needed to fire her right away. The following day he fired her. 
but she shows up at our doorstep. But of course, my husband wasn't home. As soon as I open the door and see that it's her, she pulls out pepper spray and sprays me in the face. I fall to the floor and she grabs me by my ankles and drags me to her car. She was like scary strong. She opened up her trunk door and actually tried to pull me inside, but she couldn't lift me. Luckily, one of my neighbors was there and started yelling at her to leave me alone. That's when she got in her car and drove off. The police pulled her over two miles away. In her car, she had a shovel and an axe. She told the cops that she was planning on aliving me so that she could stay with my stupid husband. She went to jail and my husband and I are still together. Should I get a divorce? I don't know. about how my parents caught me selling my undies online. Disclaimers is now my story time of sending me on Instagram. I'm extremely, extremely spoiled. My family is extremely rich. This allows me to buy whatever I want. The problem is my dad caught me sneaking out of my window, so he grounded me for two months and took away my allowance. And my allowance is a lot. My dad usually gave me $150 a week. With that money, I would go to Starbucks every single day before school, and I would also treat my friends to Starbucks every now and then, more like every day. My friends and I would go to restaurants and have fancy dinners and lunches, and I also had a car. I would also go shopping almost every single Friday with my friends. I would get manicures and pedicures, and I could basically buy myself whatever I wanted just by asking my dad for the money. But now that I was grounded, that was not gonna happen. By the way, I'm 20 now, but this was three years ago, so I was 17 when all of this happened. I can confidently say that I was like the queen bee in my high school. Number one, I was in the cheerleading squad. Number two, I was super pretty popular and had lots of money. Therefore, everyone wanted to hang out with me. I knew that I needed to maintain my status and also the life that I had become accustomed to. Not being able to go to Starbucks every single morning really made me depressed. That probably made you roll your eyes, but I said what I said. Now, there was no way I was gonna go get a job somewhere. You would never catch me working at a cafe or a restaurant or something like that so I knew I had to start making my own money online somehow I did some research and found out that people would sell pictures and video of their feet so I signed up for this stupid website and decided to do it the problem was that by the end of the week I had only made $46 this was clearly not enough so I did some more research and found out that you could actually sell your undies so I took my last $200 went to Victoria's Secret and stocked up on undies and this is when things get really fun part two is up Part two of how my parents caught me selling my undies online. Disclaimers did not waste our time and set me on Instagram. So I took my last $200, went to Victoria's Secret, and stocked up on undies. I signed up to this website, and within a week, I had about 80 orders. So that means in one week, I sold $2,000 worth of my own underwear. This is when I realized that I could charge way more than I had been. So I doubled the price, and the following week, I made $4,000. So here's the first mistake I made. I decided to tell my girlfriends about it, and they decided to sign up and start selling their own undies. After after a month, all of my friends and I were selling our undies, and we were all making bank. This also meant that we were spending lots of money. I started buying designer handbags and shoes. One of my friends even put a down payment to a car, and her parents started asking her tons of questions. And so did mine. Part 3 is up. Part three of how my parents caught me selling my undies online. Disclaimers are not my story time was sending me on Instagram. When my parents realized that I was buying all these designer bags and shoes, they started asking me questions. I was strong and I kept my mouth shut. Now my friends on the other hand who were also selling their undies, one of them got questioned by her parents and she gave up all the information. She even told her parents that I was the mastermind behind everything and that I had told all the other girls to start selling their undies, which was true. So it was official, I had been caught. Of course, my mom's friend runs straight over to my house and she starts spilling all the beans to my parents. My dad and mom came straight to my room and started rummaging through everything. That's when they find all my purses, my shoes, had stacks of cash in my drawers, and under my mattress. All of my friends got grounded, but my parents decided to take it a step further. They were so disgusted with me that they actually kicked me out of the house. But the good news is, I had a lot of money, so I got myself a really nice apartment. So jokes on my parents. With all the money that I made, I decided to start a side hustle. I have my own employees and run my business from my house. My parents and I still talk, and my dad's even invested into my new company. When I look back at what I did, I do feel shame, but at the same time, I've become so successful from that money. What should I invest in next?
story time about how my boyfriend sent me proof that he was cheating on me by mistake. This claim is not my story time. It's sending me on Instagram. My stupid, idiotic boyfriend is so dumb. Like, seriously dumb. We've been dating for six months and we met on a dating app. As soon as we became boyfriend and girlfriend, he introduced me to all of his friends. And one of his best friends happens to be a girl. A very, very good looking girl. And no, I didn't even let it bother me because he told me he loved me and he liked me. And obviously, like, why wouldn't he just date her? But here's the thing. Every time I would hang out with her and my boyfriend, she would make it so obvious that she was competing for his attention. She would wear really short crop tops and show off all her cleavage. And if a big group of us went to a bar, she would make sure to get super drunk and make a scene. And any time that she would get hit on by a guy, she would run to my boyfriend and tell her to save him. And he did everything she told him to. A few weeks ago, we were all at a house party and she made sure to only dance with him the entire night. Of course, this made me uncomfortable, so I started asking him questions. He denied everything profusely, so I just let it go. But a few days later, I get a screenshot that he obviously meant to send to one of his guy best friends about his girl best friend. And this screenshot was a picture that she had sent him, along with a few messages that they had sent each other. He told her that she looked hot in the picture and that she was hoping I would break up with him soon. What more proof did I need? Part two is up. Part two of how my stupid boyfriend sent me proof that he was cheating on me by mistake. Disclaimers is not my story time. I sent him on Instagram. In the screenshot that he sent me by mistake, I read the messages between him and his girl best friend. And the last message was her asking him, so when are you going to break up with her to be with me? Mind you, my boyfriend and I have been together for six months. We had already talked about getting an apartment together and I didn't see this coming whatsoever. So here's what I did. I took a screenshot of the screenshot he sent me and I sent it back to him. When I saw that he read it, he didn't say anything. So instead I tried to call him. Guess Guess what? He blocked me. I was at work at the time, so I couldn't leave my job. But I spent the rest of my shift running to the toilet because I had diarrhea. I was nervous and my palms were super sweaty. Mom spaghetti. But seriously, I felt sick to my stomach. After an hour, I realized that he was totally going to ignore me. I decided to send the screenshot to her. That's when this girl told me to leave them alone and that my boyfriend didn't want to hear from me ever again. I told her that he was the one that needed to tell me that. Then she sends me a picture of him and her kissing. She was ruthless. Once my shift ended, I drove straight to his house but he wasn't there. I went to the bar where they usually hang out, but they weren't there either. Finally, a few hours later, I get a message from him telling me that I just need to get over him and that the relationship wasn't going anywhere. Oh yeah, and that he was totally in love with his best friend, but he didn't realize it until he started dating me. He even left all of my stuff in a box outside of his house. It's been a week and I still haven't seen his face. I want to get back with him, but I realize he's a bad guy. What do I do? My parents used to take my siblings and I to the beach a lot when we were really little because they were like, this is a great way for our children to become both tired and educated because we would explore the tide pools and stuff and we'd find all kinds of new marine life like one time we heard my older brother yell look what i found and we looked out into the water and he'd waded out a little bit and he was holding up a jellyfish in his hand and obviously my parents freaked out and they scooped him out of the water and they separated him from the jellyfish and i was the younger sister i was like well i should also get to hold the jellyfish if he got to hold the jellyfish and they said no and i said why not and they said because you could die from holding a jellyfish and I was like no because he'd die first so we'd know to take me to the emergency room it'll be fine let me hold the jellyfish they said no I was angry I was like I have the worst parents in the world for not letting me hold the wild venomous ocean alien that my brother found and he got to hold it he was totally fine by the way I don't know if it was one of those jellyfish that just doesn't have much sting to it or if it had been dead for a really really long time but my brother was fine my parents also implemented this rule that we weren't allowed to bring home any stones or shells from the beach because we needed to leave them behind so everyone who passed through the beach could see how pretty they were, which I still actually believe to be pretty true depending on who owns the beach, what my relationship is to it, um, shells. Yeah, so we weren't allowed to bring them home, but I'm pretty sure my parents did that because they didn't want us emptying out the entire beach from our pockets into the house. But sometimes if we found something we really, really liked, we would sneak it. Like one time I found this giant shell. It was technically a Dungeness crab and it was dead and it was missing a leg. And here's what my little brain thought when I found this dead crab. If you don't know what a Dungeness crab, Dungeness crab is, it is the kind of crab you'd see like on a plate at a restaurant. It's the medium sized eating crab. And I thought, you know, in the tide pools, there are her the hermit crab dudes right and they leave their shells behind and you can pick up the shells and they're empty and I thought that because this was also a crab and I got my shoebox down and I showed her my cool shell and she explained to me that I'd brought home a dead animal and put it in my closet I the asshole for banning my boyfriend from my car after he threw away my husband's car pendant
I, female 33, am a widow and lost my husband to brain cancer in 2017. I'm currently with my boyfriend of two years and he used to have his own car but totaled it and got injured as well. I started driving in places and for so many times he commented on my husband's car pendant. I hang it on the rearview mirror and he called it old and distracting which annoyed me a lot. He suggested I replace it with a more elegant mirror charm but I refused and told him to respect that this is a sentimental item I want to keep. Well, I found out that yesterday he took it and threw it away. I had it with him and went off. Am I the asshole for banning my boyfriend from my car after he threw away my husband's car pendant? I had it with him and went off on him for nearly 30 minutes while he tried to explain that he didn't think it was pretty or useful. He offered to get me something else and something more elegant and pleasing. I loudly told him he overstepped and said from now on he won't be allowed in my car and I won't be driving him anywhere. He said I can't do that because he lost his car and has an injury and needs to be transported. I suggested his brother but he ranted about how I was over exaggerating. I said it's not his car and I don't go around throwing his stuff out despite it being his car. Am I the asshole?